Thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Brent Shu, and I run strategy and special projects at Tendermint. And at Tendermint, we are building on the Cosmos network. So everything in the Cosmos network is uh, a, uh, a attempt at creating interoperable systems within a decentralized ecosystem. So who here loves Ethereum? Uh, I love Ethereum. I, I love Ethereum a lot. I, I, I spent my entire blockchain career working on Ethereum. So I joined Consensus, the software studio, back in 2016. And we looked at everything possible in the Ethereum space. So everything from applications like MetaMask, infrastructure like Infura, different enterprise use cases, working with companies like Microsoft and BHP Billiton and Johnson Johnson, figuring out how to apply this technology in, in certain use cases. And it was very interesting because the, the nuance that folks were saying back in 2016, 2017, and still today is that this was kind of a technology that was like a hammer looking for a nail. And I think there's many reasons for folks who think that way. Um, the, the real world practical use cases are still somewhat limited. So in this presentation, we hope, uh, I, I personally hope to explore what can we do to make this technology more usable? How do we frame a, a Cosmos blockchain or Ethereum blockchain into being formulated into a practical real world abstraction that can be used within our daily lives? So I, I took a lot of inspiration from ETH Waterloo. I had a chance to work with uh, Sunny Agarwal and Billy Ranekamp on a, on a really cool project. So, you know, what we did was we did a little bit of thinking. We thought, huh, you know, a lot of these ERC-20 uh, token accounts already have backdoors and, and admin privileges. Uh, that's kind of centralized. So why don't we just, uh, you know, uh, take it to the exact opposite direction and just say, why not just trust Google uh, for, for this use case? So we decided to see, okay, what if we connected Ethereum to a Google spreadsheet and we use that Google spreadsheet as sort of a trusted, minimalized trusted sidechain, and then we, we facilitate transactions via Google OAuth. Uh, you know, essentially we could use email addresses uh, and have pretty superior UI. So Google Spreadsheets as a sidechain in Ethereum, we called it Sheetcoin. So with Sheetcoin, you can essentially add Ethereum into a Google Spreadsheet and manipulate that Ethereum and use it in various different contexts within the spreadsheet. So imagine anything that you can do in a spreadsheet, you can do on Ethereum, in a way. Uh, you have to trust Google, but, but you know who doesn't really trust Google these days? So this was a, a side chain that was fully connected. Um, we utilized uh, the OAuth for handling transactions uh, on and off Google, but everything that happens on Google was very seamless, and this was very usable. It was very slick UI. The Google spreadsheets worked. They, they weren't very slow. I mean, they, it was very fast, and it was very usable. And I think what it did was it gave an indication of what we would want to see in a fully functional blockchain ecosystem with a functional sidechain. So when the sidechain is able to operate with the seamlessness of a Google spreadsheet, you get a, ch you get a chance to see, oh, what happens when you have these real world asset transfers across chains? So why am I talking about this? IBC, Interblockchain Communication Protocol, is a protocol that will allow functionality, as I just described, eventually in a blockchain ecosystem. So, you know, you go to these talks and people talk about this seamless new political, economic, and uh, new paradigm of how technology can behave. And yet, right now, UI and usability of these systems is still somewhat limited. When we eventually have a system that can work as seamlessly as that Ethereum, to Google Bridge, then we will have a usable system in which different ecosystems can actually work together and operate in a useful fashion. So what is IBC? IBC is essentially a mechanism to implement 
modules within the state machines of different blockchains, allowing them to be connected via a relayer that transports packets of information across the network. So essentially, it is uh, our equivalent of a, of a TCP IP protocol, uh, ability to prove hash commits and Merkle proofs between different systems. And Essentially, these modules are deterministic processes that run on independent state machines, allowing these different blockchains or state machines to be able to communicate with each other. What we hope to achieve with this IBC protocol is to essentially have that seamless communication across systems. So what, is, what does IBC do? You know, it, it handles data transport, uh, authentication, reliability. It allows cross, uh, arbitrary cross-chain data transfers and computation, essentially sharing computation across networks, allowing that interoperability that we all seek. Uh, a lot of times interoperability in different blockchain conferences is interpreted as a, sometimes a, 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 a catch-all term or sometimes as sort of this pie-in-the-sky concept. Interoperability will be very useful when you want to transfer assets between different networks so you have an Ethereum blockchain, you have a Cosmos blockchain, you have Near Protocol, you have Algorand. Being able to have assets communicate between those different protocols is a useful function that allows the different types of commerce to happen across networks, similar to what the commerce that we see today between different nations, between different companies, between different organizations. Token transfers are possible. Uh, this, this was facilitated on the application layer uh, above IBC, so any apps that can be built on top of this communication protocol. And essentially, you do not have just one state machine that's split across networks. You have multiple state machines that share a common interface, allowing these state machines to interact with each other. And essentially, you're not dealing with just one layer of the protocol stack. You're dealing with different segments of the network topology that can all talk to each other and communicate. So the example is in the, the internet was a connection via TCP IP of various disjointed ecosystems, disjointed servers. Uh, we like to apply that framework into the new blockchain ecosystem in that we're using IBC to just to connect different desperate versions of blockchain protocols so that viable communication and commerce can occur between systems. So I'm going to, uh, so in addition, um, uh, on the application side, IBC is able to handle token transfers as well as NFTs, non-fungible assets, being able to apply one F NFT in one network to another, just data transfers and smart contracts. So um, I'm going to take IBC and apply it to another system that we have, which is PEGI, a two-way PEG between Cosmos and Ethereum. So right now, IBC is designed to connect between fast finality systems. So systems that, like Tenderman consensus mechanism-based systems that allow fast finality across networks. But right now, there isn't necessarily a good communication protocol between fast finality systems and probabilistic finality systems. So proof of work Ethereum is currently probabilistic. Um, as with uh, Tendermint consensus, it's uh, fast finality, t BFT, visiting fault tolerant based uh, consensus mechanism. And so uh, right now, the way to connect those is via a two-way peg or a two-way bridge between the networks. Essentially what you have is, you have a situation in which you take assets on Ethereum, such as uh, Ether itself or ERC-20 contract, or ERC-20 token contract, and you lock that in a PEGI smart contract. This locking is communicated via a relayer service in which information is processed by an ETH bridge module and it is relayed to an oracle. What this results in is a bank module that eventually mints new versions of that Ethereum on the Cosmos network, creating this fast finality Ether. You know, we, we, or Ether or ERC-20 token contract. We've been working on this bridge for roughly two and a half years now, and actually for this hackathon, uh, Billy Renenkamp completed um, this two-way bridge. So we're able to transfer Ethereum into the Cosmos network, and we're also able to transfer it back, creating this interoperability service. Uh, surface. And what, what PEGI allows is the ability to connect between Cosmos and Ethereum 
and reallocate some of the functionality across chains uh, between these two networks. We hope to put this together in a cohesive system in which we are able to utilize all aspects of the blockchain, not just the fast mounting system, but also interact with the proof of work system. So I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to show an example of a real world use case, uh, different tools that we've built that can be formulated together and re-implemented as a system that t makes use of PEGI, uh, IBC protocol, as well as a, a DEX, a decentralized exchange that we open sourced uh, a few months ago at SF Blockchain Week. So what happens when you take a IBC protocol, you add different components of a PEGI, two-way PEG protocol, as well as implementing a DEX, a decentralized exchange that can allow trading of different assets within the ecosystem. So let's, let's look at this network um, with IBC. So if you were to include, uh, or let's, excuse me, let's look at the network without IBC first. So right now, uh, you have an infrastructure where you have a, a single Cosmos hub. And this hub is able to connect to different applications that utilize the hub. So, um, you know, you can have app one, app two, and then you add a DEX to it. Without IBC, at the moment, you need different versions of PEGI on each application that connects to the Cosmos hub. So each PEGI has their own relayer set, they have their own contract, and every time you mint a token on the PEGI chain, it is insulated particular, uh, directly to that chain. So if app one mints a uh, PEGI token, then app one has its own app one PEGI token that needs to be re-added to the Cosmos network before you add that token to app two. Um, same with the DEX. So as you can see, it's, it's uh, somewhat of a uh, disjointed ecosystem. Um, there's not necessarily economic finality across the network, and every relayer service occurs off-chain on different smart contracts. So it, it's still somewhat disjointed. But what happens when you add IBC uh, to this equation? When you're able to add this ETH peg zone uh, that implements PEGI, within the entire Cosmos hub, you no longer rely on an insulated PEGI within every application that exists on your network, but rather you're able to share the PEGI zone with every app that's connected within the Cosmos hub. What you have is a sharding of the depository clearinghouse of every chain so that every, every app that works within the Cosmos network is able to use PEGI tokens that are minted, essentially creating a way for Ethereum and ERC-20 tokens to be added into the Cosmos hub and utilized, similar to that sheet coin example, similar to, in that instead of relying on, on proof of work to validate all transactions that happen in Ethereum, you're able to have that more fast finality interface that creates more usability and creates better functionality, creating a, a more cohesive ecosystem. And as mentioned earlier, this is not a, not a singleton infrastructure uh, under one party. This is several disjointed blockchains that connect each other via this communication. And uh, in this cross-chain network, you're minimizing the platform risk because every risk is united by a singleton protocol for communicating cross systems. And when you think about this, this can, uh, this can be applied to various societal paradigms. Not, not only are we relying on the blockchain for simple asset transfers, you're able to take a blockchain asset like Ethereum and implement it in a fast finality system similar to how our real world organizes, similar to how we expect functionality to exist in a cohesive, workable ecosystem, similar to if we were to take the UI of Google and add it to the asset transfer capability of Ethereum. So uh, I wanted to thank everyone. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to say Sheetcoin at least five times in this presentation. Um, I hope uh, folks are, you know, have an opportunity to uh, look, check out the, the Cosmos network and, and um, take a look at a lot of the protocols that are being built. Um, just to uh, uh, give a shameless pr plug, um, we have a, uh, we're still accepting bounty submissions. Um, 
you know, we have we have three main prizes for folks who build on anything related to uh, Cosmos. Uh, Ethermint, which is our EVM uh, compatible Tendermint uh, based uh, chain, as well as on Peggy. So, uh, and uh, IBC, of course. So um, we're very interested in looking at different submissions. We want to see different applications that utilize both the Cosmos and the Ethereum blockchain. And uh, you know, as I, as, as I mentioned in the beginning of this talk, uh, I, I love Ether a lot. I hope everyone else loves Ether, Ethereum, and uh, looking forward to seeing what people build. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, also, uh, questions, if, if folks have any. We've got a mic for uh, questions, so everybody on the stream can hear you. Thank you so much.